Hey you guys, I'm Steven. I'm Giselle. And we're the Lover's Passport. Today we're going to talk to you guys about how we set up our photos and what goes through our thought process. So that way you can take your own couple's photos too. Alright, so starting from number one, first thing we do is tripod. We use a Peak Design travel tripod. You can check it out in our link below. So we love the Peak Design travel tripod because of how compact it is. It literally is the size of a Hydro Fast as well as it's about this big. It can fit in any backpack as well as we can hold it in our hands. It's very, very light. We've brought it on backpacking trips. We've put it through everything. Stuck it in a river, yeah, on I, cliffs. We put it in the river from Yosemite when we were getting some pictures in the Merced River. It was crazy. It was even like wind. I've had my backpack on it. We were in 20 to 30 mile an hour winds and the tripod like started walking. It didn't fall over. It just like moved a little bit. Yeah, we never had a problem with yeah, it. Yeah, really, really love it. Highly recommend it. That's the first thing you need is tripod. Second thing you need is a wireless remote. So we both have used an Enagon remote and an Ad Adelin remote. Mm -hmm. And both of them have been great. We like to have two just in case one breaks as a backup. Because uh, sometimes when we're out in the backcountry or we're pretty far away from civilization, we don't want that to happen. We want to be prepared. So highly recommend if you do that kind of adventure photography style to invest in two um, wireless remotes. Definitely. Uh, the nice thing about it is ours specifically go up to a 300 foot range or about like 250 to 300 feet uh, range away. So we could do some really cool landscape shots with us in them. And uh, yeah, that's probably the biggest selling point for us is how far away it can get because a lot of them don't do that. So make sure to check that out when you're um, looking for a Bluetooth remote. And the last thing I would say is just because we used to use the self timer. And if you've ever used the self timer, there's a lot of like running shots <laughs> and you waste a lot of shots waiting to get in frame. Yes, you only interval timer is great, self timer is great, but if you really want to take it and especially if you're using it on quite a few trips like we use it every single trip we go on each weekend, highly recommend getting a remote. Number 3 is the camera and the lens. So you have to have a camera and a lens. You can also use your iPhone, the new iPhone. If you iPhone, have a tripod. Yeah, the new iPhone 12 is awesome. 11 too. Actually, any iPhone past Any like iPhone 10. is just insane. The new wide lens in it is phenomenal. So if you guys have the opportunity to get that, that's really easy. You can stick it in your pocket. We have quite a few friends who use that and still use it on a tripod. But if you guys want to invest in a camera, we use the Canon 80D. It's a good budget camera. We got it for under $700 if we had the refurbished one. And lenses wise, you'll want two. Try and get one wide lens. It's great for vlogging, great for especially if you're t trying to just take a quick snap with a bunch of friends. It's really wide. I got the 10 to 18 millimeter 4.5 by Canon. It's a good budget lens. And I would recommend one zoom lens. A good zoom is like a 24 to 70. I'm using the 17 to 55 because we're on a crop sensor. But make sure you take some time looking at whether you want landscape self photography or if you want to do portrait self photography, then you're going to want like a 1.8 aperture. We're going to do a whole nother video on aperture and shutter speed. So if you have any questions about that, make Drop sure to leave below. it below. But first thing, figure out what kind of self photography you want to do. We love doing more landscapey, so we need a little bit more of a zoom lens and a wide lens. Uh, but if you have any questions about lenses or the camera equipment you use, leave it in the comments below. Once you have all your camera gear in order, we always start planning for our mm -hmm. shots with research and location scouting and that way we can kind of get an idea of what the environment we're going to be in is like what the lighting is going to be like what time of day you should go whether it's sunrise sunset or mid um, afternoon type of thing so that's always really important because outdoor photography really requires you knowing your lighting in order to get the best results like today um, we're shooting and it's totally cloudy so that's why we're able to do it in the middle of the day without creating a bunch of really harsh shadows mm -hmm. um, and then also when you're looking into a location we do a lot of hikes and dr off-roading drives to get to really cool spots. So you want to make sure you know exactly what you're getting yourself into depending on the location you're trying to go for. Right now, for instance, we're just in a local spot. We decided to drive this road down a canyon and we found this really cool like tree it's tunnel. Beautiful. 
And so we decided, hey, let's pull off and let's shoot here. Why not? So um, sometimes it takes a little research and sometimes you just stumble upon really cool <laughs> gems and totally. have an eye for some cool framing. So uh, yeah, so once you have your first step of location scouting, then you can get into really finessing the details of your photos. So after we figure out what kind of location we're going to, then we start planning the outfits. For every single location we go to, we try and bring like at least three outfits. We bring a hiking one, we bring a trendy one, and then we bring a colorful one. Yes, so for example, like right now, we have our hiking clothes, our sweatshirts, mm -hmm. our jackets, which also provide a little pop of color or contrast against our background. I am also wearing a dress underneath because that kind of provides like an enchanting vibe to your mm -hmm. picture when it's flowing or whatever. No, I do not hike in dresses. <laughs> I always put them in my backpack. If you hike in dresses, just prepare to be uncomfortable because they will <laughs> snag on something. So yeah, we always bring our clothes in our backpacks if we're doing something far away. And I never ever bring dresses when we're backpacking because it's just extra weight. So we just usually do um, color jackets or uh, hiking clothes for those kind of adventures. Yeah, I bring like two different bright clothes. So I love orange is an orange jacket from cool and I love my red Patagonia they both pop especially up against a green background like this you want to learn about the color wheel green and red look really really against a uh, really good against each other so that's right. why I bring that so I bring the jean jacket for a little bit of trendiness and it is fall right now so we also have flannel. the flannel just something to go with it we like to wear these hats Accessories. just because they look a little bit more trendy rather than when we wake up with hair Camping like this it's a little crazy so we like to bring like a nice little bucket hat or, or like our trucker hats from like exactly. Patagonia and cool just for when we're hiking because it's multifunctional yes so. make sure your outfits work together if you're doing it just one person then you can wear what you want but if you have two people try and get it so they color uh, coordinate exactly we like to have like a sense of balance so normally I'm wearing brighter whiter colors and he's wearing darker colors and it kind of has that yin yang effect where yeah, it's, it looks exactly. balanced on the screen yeah look at this picture that's a good example when she's wearing a lot of white and a lot of uh, I'm wearing a lot of darker colors next up we have posing everyone's least favorite thing about taking <laughs> photos because it can be awkward and we're I mean like we still get awkward especially when shooting in public but right now we're in private so it doesn't really matter yes but i feel like that's our number one question is what how do i get better at poses or teach us more poses and you just got to keep on doing it got to yeah. keep on practicing we always go in with like a mental list of certain poses when we're shooting so that way when we get to a location especially if it's in public we can just <laughs> snap them out and like be done mm -hmm, <laughs> um totally. we really don't take that long to do our photo shoots we take maybe five minutes stops mm -hmm. so like for example Example, we will always do a handhold D while we're walking away from the camera and then walk towards the camera. We'll do one person sitting, one person standing, both of us standing. One person on the back, one person. Like a piggyback ride mm -hmm. or like he's carrying me like a cradle. Um, some other ones we've done. The foreheads. Yes, like with your forehead. It's like a thing they do in engagement shoots. It works. And it looks cute if it you're works. Coupling. You just put yeah. your foreheads together. And then you could be on top of his shoulders or you could, he could be on top of your shoulders. You can throw up signs, throw up the hats. Yeah, throw up the hats. It's another one. Uh, so really just making a list and going in and being prepared can really help you in the moment with posing and not feeling as awkward. Totally. All right, next up are foreground and framing. So these are two things, if you follow us on Instagram, we just talked about this in a recent post for our fall colors, but foreground is when you put something closer. Like you see us here, if let's say I put in my finger, see how my fingers are blurry, but my face is in, that gives it some more, exactly, if I use a leaf, let's say you use it to block something, or you put it really, really close, the leaf is blurry, but I am in focus. You can use that to your advantage in photos a lot. It can add some texture, it can add some dimension, as well as layers to your photography. For example, check this one out. It's one of our fall colors pictures where we created a little bit of foreground. See how we kind of framed it where all the fall colors were around it, and then you saw us in the middle, which leads us into the next point about framing. So if you look behind us, you can see this kind of like tree arch. We love this area because if you look right in the middle here, you can see that little opening. We're trying to frame ourselves with Around that. It. So it kind of brings your focus into the middle. You can use that with trees like we just used in this fall picture. You can use that with a cave. You can use it 
basically with anything. A foreground helps a lot, especially when it comes to framing. The two kind of work hand in hand. So when you get to a location next time and you're like, oh, this looks really cool. A good little technique is to look for a way to frame it or put some foreground in it just to make your photo a little bit more interesting from everyone else's photos because there's millions of pictures being posted every day. You want to try and do something to your photo that sets it apart from everyone else. And you'll notice too here we also like to use leading lines in our mm -hmm. photos. So for example here your eye is immediately drawn down the road to this little area so we try and use leading lines in our favor because they will lead towards a subject and that's usually where you can stand and it will catch people's attention. For example, check out this picture from our Valley of Fire trip with amazing leading lines. A picture kind of also looks like bacon, but... <laughs> <laughs> Natural it, leading lines are everywhere if you just look for them. Yes, just little quick things to do when you guys are out because taking a picture is really easy. Taking a good picture or an interesting picture that kind of makes people wonder um, how they didn't see that or how they haven't been there. If you look at a lot of photographers, I feel like they're really simple things. They just find a different perspective to look at that. And using framing and using leading lines and using all these different pieces can really help make your photos pop. And last but not least, we also like to use props sometimes <laughs> on our photos, whether it's like our hats or something else we're holding. Right now we're shooting some fall color stuff. Mm. So we brought our pumpkins from the pumpkin patch along. Uh, it just adds like, a, you can see how much this orange contrasts with the green in Especially the background. The green, yeah. Like, it really just adds an extra pop of color and adds something interesting to the photo. We don't always like to use props and we don't always have them available, but for kind of lifestyle shooting like this, if you're just trying to take some cute couple photos, then we like using them. Yes, I definitely feel like it can add to storytelling. Like if let's say you have a prop of a tent, we've definitely used that before. Oh, totally. It kind of tells the story like, oh, I'm out in the back country, I'm experiencing the woods and this beautiful nature. You can use that with fire, fire and s'mores. You're having a good, everyone can relate to that and it tells a story. And so, that's what photography is all about. It's mm -hmm. about telling stories through the lens of your camera. Exactly. All right, you guys, so I hope those tips helped you guys out. That's kind of what we we do every single time we take a photo. And our process is our process. You may mm. like to do something different or you may have heard other people doing something different, but that's just been what's been working for us. Uh huh. If you guys have any other questions about how we get our photos or location scouting or how to, um, how to edit your photos, please leave a comment down below. And as always, make sure to like and subscribe if you like this kind of content. We'll always be putting out adventure related videos, whether it's related to photography like this one, our national park guides, or best couples outdoor adventures, mm -hmm. things like that. Yeah, I think this is actually our first like photography tutorial. Video. Yes, so, if you'd like to see more. Yes. Give it a thumbs up. We would love to create this stuff for you. We just want to know how we can give you the most value. Anyway, we'll see you guys in the next adventure.